Hi class, today we're going to be talking about ecosystems and specifically each of the different levels that are going to make up ecosystems. So first of all, what is ecology? This is the beginning of our unit and ecology is the study of how living things interact with each other and with their environment. So if we look at an ecosystem, an ecosystem is going to be all the living and non-living things that interact in a specific area. So an organism is going to get their food, water, shelter, other things that they need to live and grow and reproduce and survive in their surroundings. That place where that organism lives that provides everything they need is called a habitat. So it's kind of like when you go to um, the zoo, it's called the elephant habitat and it has everything that they need to um, eat and sleep and um, water and food and everything that they need to survive. So an organism is going to interact not only with the living, but with the non-living things in their ecosystem. And we call these biotic and abiotic factors. So biotic factors are the living parts of the ecosystem. So these would include any plants or animals. The abiotic factors are the non-living things, things like sunlight and the temperature and soil and water and oxygen and rocks and all kinds of different stuff in their ecosystem. So if we look at our levels, it's broken down into five major levels. So we start here with an individual. So you can see there's one elk here. Um, just one specific individual is that level. When we go to population, there's more than one, but they're all the same species. So you can see there's more than one of the elk here. When we go to the community level, the new thing that we're adding in is other species. So these are going to be other plants and animals, such as a moose, maybe a, a cougar, an owl, maybe a gopher. When you add to the um, move to the next level of the ecosystem, this is where you add in the abiotic factors. So we're going to include water, maybe there's some dead trees, maybe some rocks, but also multiple um, different species of animals. And then when you have a bunch of collective ecosystems that have similar um, living environments, when we talk about a biome, this would be, for example, like the entire rainforest across the whole planet, um, that's considered at the biome level. <clears throat> and then if we zoom out even further, the biosphere would be um, our, our entire planet. So if you look at these levels, um, as the terms of a pyramid, the individual will be here, moving up to population, to community, to ecosystem, to biome. So you can see, obviously, the individual is going to include less. That's why it's at the top of the pyramid. The biome is the largest level, so it's going to be down here at the bottom and include the most things. So going back, an individual organism is just one single living thing, one flower, one meerkat. The next level is a population. This is where you add in um, all the members of one species in a certain area. So they're actually going to be competing for um, things like food and water and space. Um, for example, ladybugs on a leaf. The next level is community. So this is going to be um, different populations that live together. So you've got bees and daisies and ladybugs and grass. Or, for example, fish and snail and turtles and kelps. You've got multiple different species of plant and animals. The community level still only includes your biotic factors. As we move to the ecosystem level, this is where you add in the non-living or abiotic parts. So, um, you know, a beach, pond, dead log. There's um, both abiotic and biotic factors at this level. And then if we expand further out to the biome, this is a group of ecosystems that have the same climate and similar communities. Um, examples of different biomes are going to be um, the desert or the rainforest or um, a tundra. So there's a bunch of different ecosystems. You can see um, here the color coding shows you kind of across the planet where each of these different biomes are. Um, when you're looking at the community interactions between those living organisms, um, the first is competition. So they're going to be competing for resources like food or space. Um, if they aren't there, then they are probably going to leave that environment. The second is predation. So we have an organism that's going to feed on another, whether it's a plant or an animal. And the third is symbiosis. And this is a relationship where two organisms live very closely together. Um, and depending on the type of symbiotic relationship, um, some, one of them is going to benefit in some way. So the three types of symbiosis are going to be mutualism, this is where both species benefit. For example, flowers and insects. Okay? So the flowers are going to be pollinated, the insects get their food source, both of them benefit. So this is going to be seen as a positive-positive relationship. Commensalism is where one member benefits and the other is neither helped nor harmed. They're not really um, either way, so this would be a positive and kind of a neutral sort of relationship. The other isn't really bothered. And the third is parasitism, and this is where one member benefits and the other is actually harmed. So for example, um, tapeworms, if they are in your digestive system, they're going to be getting a food source and that's going to be harming you. So again, to um, kind of recap, the five levels you need to know um, are going to start from individual, build up to population, to community, to ecosystem, to biomes. And that which, that's what you need to know about the different levels of organization for ecology.